Hello everybody. So here's my trusty 10 inch Newtonian Skywatcher. And uh, I've got a couple of things I want to do to it. Um, it's doing me really proud, but um, I'd quite like to flock the inside. So that's to get rid of any unwanted reflections. And to do that, I'm going to need to take off the secondary, the focuser, and also the primary mirror cell as well. Um, just so I don't get, get dirt on them or anything, or scratch them. Um, so while I'm doing that, I'm also going to have a look at collimating my uh, two-speed focuser because there's some collimation screws around which allows you to adjust the um, the axis of, of the focuser and then if I come down to this end what I've done also is I've fitted in a secondary mirror um, heater which you can't see at the moment but uh, I'll show you a bit closer later on uh, it's on the back of the uh, the secondary mirror um, the cable comes out like this so when I'm, I've got it running along one of the spider vanes and it comes out to an RCA plug it's okay, but I'd quite like to bring it out in a more permanent position because I can't get the cap back on properly. I have to sort of balance this in here. Um, so I'm thinking about uh, drilling a hole in the side uh, in line with the focuser so it doesn't uh, show up in the, the main image train. Um, and then being able to plug in on the outside of it. So um, yeah, pretty big job. So let's get to it. So before we get started on all that, I just wanted to show you something that uh, I hadn't realized as well. So we all talk about light leakage and reflections coming down the, the main tube from, from this end of the tube. Um, but something you should be aware of as well um, is that the other end of the tube, and I'll show you that now, um, as you can see, it's got this uh, spider arrangement on the back, but it also has some light leakage paths. And to demonstrate that, if I turn my iPhone light on, I'm pretty sure what you will see down the other end there is a lot. Now, okay, it's fairly bright at that point, but you can see it's actually getting into the imaging train quite easily. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I might even think about some sort of plastic cover just to, to cover it up, actually. Right, so um, we've got to take various bits and pieces out, and uh, let's start with the uh, secondary. Um, so on the Skywatcher, on this one, it has these uh, these knurled screws holding it in place, and there are four of them all the way around. Um, so yeah, we've got to be a bit careful. Obviously, it's an, uh, you know the mirrors in there. We don't want that to fall over. So what I'm going to do is take out opposite sides um, first, so that we don't uh, we don't risk anything really. So um, yeah, okay. Well, let's let's start with these two. Why not? as we're here. So I'll take the first one out and they're just uh, screws on the end. Second one, okay, so it rotates but it doesn't move. So if I now um, just move the scope over a bit so I can get to the other two. And I think what I'll do is one at a time now. I don't risk it. Okay, so there is the uh, secondary mirror. And uh, yeah, you can see I use some tape and my heating elements on the back there. So that's what we've got to work with. And as you can see, the problem with this is actually that can touch. So I'm not very keen on leaving that loose and lying around, especially when I'm transporting the, uh, the telescope. Okay, so looking at the fo focuser, um, I've left the, the main part all connected and I'm just going to remove these uh, four screws, uh, basically holding the whole assembly in place. Um, looking on the inside, they've got nuts on the inside of them, so I should be a bit careful with that. Let's see how we go. Let's take the bottom ones out again, just to try and stop everything falling off. And that should 
basically just come out in one piece like so. So that's the focusing unit. And what you can see here is the, the collimating screws. Um, so yeah, a locking screw and also the adjustment um, grub screw as well. And I think this must be yeah, collimation also for the main part of the tube. Great. Okay, so the uh, primary mirror cell at the back there is held on by uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight screws at the back here. So I'm going to uh, speed things up by using one of these. Let's take out every other one. Now the pro primary mirror should also be marked as to uh, where its home position is, so I will check that. Let's see how we go. Okay, now it doesn't look like I've marked it, which is, I, th I marked the mirror going into it, yeah, here, but not the tube it seems. So I think that's what I will do right now. It shouldn't make too much difference actually. So I brought it in from the shed, you can see it's already got a little bit of condensation but it's quite clean so I'm not going to clean that. Actually, I don't think I need to, but I am going to put it somewhere really safe. Okay, so I've uh, got a plastic box with a lid, some tea towels in the bottom, and I'm going to put everything pretty much that I take off, I'm going to put it in there. Um, of course, if I drop that, everything goes kab kaboom, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be all right. It does make you nervous though, I have to say. All right, stay safe. Okay, so for the um, for the hole for the secondary heat tube heater to come out, I want it to go somewhere in this region, somewhere in between. This is uh, one of the spider um, securing bolts, and these are the screws for the the focuser itself. So what I've got is a, uh, a female chassis mount. Um, RCA or phono plug and it actually fits through that that one quite well it's not a bad fit it's a little bit on the big side but that's roughly how big I want the hole to be um, but obviously I can't start with such a large hole so I'm going to use a very very small drill in this case it's a one and a half millimeters diameter and see how I get on So I'm not sure whether I should, uh, as I'm drilling it by hand, whether I should go all the way out. So instead of that, I'm going to use a 3.2 mil drill, um, somewhat bigger than the one and a half, just to enlarge the hole before I go for the full six or seven mil. Okay. All good so far. See how we go. Good. Okay, so um, here's the flocking material, and uh, it comes in a roll. I got this from First Light Optics. It's actually the same stuff that they use on uh, gaming tables as well. You can buy the American stuff, um, but uh, it's a bit more expensive than this. And this actually seems to have a pretty good 
um, reflective index anyway, so pretty low. So I've got several uh, things and they're all going to go around the inside there. But before I do that, I want to clean the inside of it, first of all. And uh, to do that, um, yeah, I'm just going to use, I've got some isopropanol alcohol and a, uh, hopefully a fairly lint-free cloth. So I'm just going to have a go at cleaning that and see how we get on. I think some of it's just the, uh, the basic coating coming off. Um, but yeah, lots of it. Um, obviously it picks up dust and dirt during the time outside as well. Okay, you don't need to see me doing this, I'll finish off. Okay, so for the uh, flocking material, um, it comes in 45 centimeter width and about a meter long. Um, so uh, I'm not sure which way to do it really. A meter isn't quite long enough for the whole instrument. You know what? I'm thinking that this is just gonna be too unwieldy. When I take this backing off with all the sticky in there, I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to get it into that <laughs> uh, without creasing it and getting it into a right mess. So I'm thinking that what I want to do is do it in sections actually. Maybe something like that. One, two, three. Okay, so I've got this cut up into three sections and uh, that's the width. So it's got to go in basically like that. Yeah, not easy, especially this bit. Maybe I'll start with an easier bit that's not quite so rolled up and see how we get on with that. All right, so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put it alongside this one seam it gives me a nice edge to go from. And uh, yeah, let's we'll see how we go. Like so. So I'm thinking if I can just peel a little bit, stick the edge on. That looks good. Here we go. I really could do with some more light, couldn't I? I'm going to get some more light before I do that. Okay, not sure how much of this you're going to get to see, but um, you'll know soon enough if I've messed it up just from the sound recording. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I've used the seam of the uh, telescope tube and hopefully now as I peel it off I can stick it down fairly flat. Let's see how we go. I can already see some bubbles and so that's not so good. even worse than putting an iPhone cover on. So what I'm wondering is, 
rather than leave it looking like that. If you can see that, there's plenty of little bubbles down the length there. So what I'm wondering is whether the knife will actually take some of those out. So let's just try. Let's see how we go. Yeah, that's not too bad actually. You can see, but I'm trying to give you a good view. So it's the same deal with this bit, straight along the end there. So, okay, so that one went on a lot better. Um, still some issues with bubbles, but what I've found is if I use the knife and just uh, make a little scratch through the bubbles then I can actually flatten it out really well anyway um, one of the things it does say about using this stuff is to actually when you finish doing it is to score it along its length anyway and because as the tube contracts and expands if you don't do that then there's a risk that the uh, um, vacuum ad adhesive can actually come away from the tube so we don't want that to happen so I'll just uh, Finish off a few more of those. Okay, of course I'm getting better at this as time goes on. So it's a practice makes perfect things. So what I found is if I just use the seam and just pull off a little bit from the middle and just go, yeah, at a very small step at a time, then I've got no problems with bubbles at all. So, uh, yeah, good to know. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure the next bits will be a lot better than the first bit. Okay, so I switched to the iPhone just to show you where I've got to. So it's going quite well at the moment. This is uh, a lot better down this end than the other. Um, so what I've been using is the seam to, to lay it up to first time round and then going around and that's uh, two pieces um, together there. So the third piece will go in the space here and that's this bit here. So what I do is just uh, roll back about uh, two centimeters or a bit more um, of the backing paper, fold it over and then line it up along the seam and uh, and then very very slowly just moving it back almost just two of these at a time and then going along the length and that's a really good way to uh, stop it um, stop it bubbling actually I found. Okay so when all of the material had been fitted I went round with a sharp knife around all the holes and just carefully cut them out uh, including the big uh, focus hole and this is what it looked like fully done ready for everything to go back together and ready for recollimation <laughs>